How's it going, everyone? Hey, we continue in our devotional series in the book of John, chapters 13 through 17. It's called the Upper Room Discourse, where Jesus is with his disciples, saying very important things to them the night before he's crucified. At our last devotional, we studied John 13, verses 1 through 20. I encourage you to check it out on YouTube. Today, we're going to be skipping past verses 21 to 30, which deals with Judas leaving the room to betray Jesus. It actually says that Satan entered into Judas, and then Judas betrayed Jesus. Today's passage is John 13, verses 31 to 38. Let's pick it up there. Therefore, when he, being Judas, had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. In other words, this glory of the Son of God, this glory uh, that God gives to him, begins at the process of Jesus laying down his own life. Je Judas has already left to betray him. And Jesus knows what's coming. That's the context of the glory taking place. Then we get to verse 32, and Jesus says, If God, God the Father, is glorified in him, the Son, God the Father will also glorify him, the Son, in himself, and will glorify him, the Son, immediately. God will receive glory from what Jesus is about to do. Jesus will receive glory for fulfilling the Father's plan. God the Father's plan was to send Jesus uh, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world in this manner, that he gave us his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The plan of God is that the Son of God would come to sacrifice himself for the sins of the world. And God receives glory from that plan, and Jesus will be exalted or glorified in that plan. But look at what Jesus continues to say in verse 33 about this plan, about this ultimate service. It says in verse 33, little children, he's speaking uh, endearingly to his disciples. I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. In other words, I'm going to be with the Father right now, but you can't go there yet. Verse 34, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another, even as I have loved you that you also love one another in the same manner, in the same way I've loved you, you need to love each other as Christians. Verse 35, by this, by this type of love for one another, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. How has Jesus loved the disciples up to this point? Well, the previous verses show to us that he is getting ready to lay his life down for them. The love of God looks like being a servant to others. And Jesus said, when you love others with a heart of service, when you love others by laying down your life for their benefit, that's how the world will know that you are my followers, you are my disciples. Listen, this is actually the point of coming to church together, that we would gather to exalt the name of Jesus and that we would gather to love one another and serve one another. Jesus should be made known to the world by how Christians love one another in their service by laying down their life. This is why church is so important. This is why fellowship is so important because it gives us an opportunity to represent our Savior and how we deal with one another. But look what Peter says, verse 36. Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered, where I go, which is to the Father, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow later. Let's just briefly turn. What, what does Jesus mean, you will follow me later? Pick it up in John 21, verse 18 and 19. Jesus later on says to Peter, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, Peter, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now this he said, signifying by what kind of death he, being Peter, would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Jesus literally just said, you can't follow me to the Father now. But there will come a day where you do lay down your life for me, so follow me to the point of death. Turn back to John chapter 13, concluding our devotional, verses 37 to 38. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you right now? I will lay down my life for you. Verse 38, Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, a rooster will not crow until you deny me three times. I find it interesting that you have two people in chapter 13 denying Jesus. You have Judas and you have Peter, but one ultimately ran away from the Lord 
and the other being Peter was repentant at the heart level and came back to Jesus. See, Peter one day will realize that if he really wants to follow Jesus, if he really wants to glorify God, he must lay down his life for the Lord and do everything that he has asked. This is what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus. A disciple means one who repents of their sin and trusts in him by faith, even to the point of death, which means Jesus is master over every decision and every opportunity, every aspect of life, even if it means death for the believer, so that God gets glory. God gets glory by our service to one another, and God gets glory by our service unto him. That's today's devotional. We pick it up at chapter 14 in the next one. God bless you all. Have a great day.